To truly understand the soul that came in Texas, you first have to start with the story of two young boys. Rodney, best be going. <laughs> that boy and his books. DJ! I'm coming. Boys who were one sworn enemy, one white, the other black. And Bandit, the puppy they found, whose life they'd saved, and by that act, became friends. And there was Daniel Burke, who despite struggling to raise his family on his own. It's beautiful, Papa. Rodney. Took the black boy in when there was no one else to do it. An act of courage in a town divided. And then the accident that left his youngest boy, Bob, crippled. And finally, it's a story of a promise one boy is now a rider made to the other. A promise to return to Canaan. And with him, he brought a gift. Offered by a stranger, a gift with the power to change so much in ways few could have ever imagined. You sure you packed enough clothes? I packed most everything I got. What about socks? Here you go. This not for you? Besides, it's a big city. If I need anything, I can just buy it new. Right, Rodney? Anything you want. And just what are you proposing to use for money? Your good looks? I'll pack some of these for you. Don't know for sure how long we're going to be gone. You might have to handle the harvest yourself this year. Well, Rodney, a pitch in. Between the two of us, we'll manage. Yeah. Anything else needs doing, you're in charge. And don't forget, there's a little bit of cash hidden in the corner of the shed, just for emergencies. We'll get along fine. You just take care of Bumper. Daddy, DJ, you need to hurry. You'll miss your flat. It wouldn't be the Burtons unless we was fixing to miss something. All right, buddy. Kiss your sister goodbye. Bye. And be sure and thank Rodney. If it weren't for him, we wouldn't be going. Thanks, Rodney. Just <laughs> make sure you do what those doctors say, OK? I will. Hey, just so as you all know, I'm not driving you all the way to San Jose. All right, let's go. I just remember something. Y'all got any gum? What do we need gum for? Keep yours from popping on the plane. Can you stop shoots. Let's do it. We got time. I'll be right back, boys. I will right, hurry we'll up. Hello. Ah, uh, Mr. Bird. Can I help you find something? Need some chewing gum. Juicy fruit, if you got it. Juicy fruit, spearmint, chiclets, complete assortment. How's that brave young Mr. Bob? I hope he's well. Oh, fair to middling. We're actually on our way to California to see if I can get him fixed up right now. California? Or if I had any sense, I'd close up and move to California myself the way things are going. Really? Business been slow? Uh, slower than slow. Dead. You my first customer all day. Well, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You know, money's always tight around here come into the month. No, it's more than that. The whole town's changing. Old folks are moving away, new folks are shopping elsewhere. Yeah. You know what? If the town's changing, maybe you ought to change right along with it. And just what would you suggest changing? Exactly. Well, I don't know. Maybe try something new. I heard about some boys putting in a big company farm south of town. Bound to be needing some farm supplies. Save them a trip to Clarksboro. Hmm. Farm supplies. And just exactly what am I supposed to know about farm supplies?
Can I help you? Yes, ma'am. I'm Daniel Burton. This is my son. We have an appointment to see Dr. Hansen. Just one moment. Yes. Dr. Hansen, the Burtons are here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Please, come in. Have a seat. I'm Daniel Burton. This is my son, Bobber. Bob. Bob. I'm Marcus Hansen. Well, I'm glad to finally meet you. As you know, I learned of your case after reading Rodney Freeman's book and approached him with my offer to help. As I told Mr. Freeman, the uh, medical school here has a very advanced neuroorthopedics group, and some good advances have been made in the whole field of spinal injury rehabilitation. So when I heard about your story, I thought you'd make a good candidate. As for the procedure itself, we'll use special pins and screws to realign and stabilize the damaged vertebrae. And then there'll be an intensive period of physical therapy where we'll strengthen some muscles and, uh, well, retrain some others. Now you'll be doing most of your work right in here. Oh, good, there's uh, Dr. Adair. She's head of our post-op rehab. Dr. Bryony Adair, I want you to meet Daniel Burton. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Burton. Thanks, it's nice to meet you, too. This is my son, Bob. It's Bob. I've been looking forward to meeting you. You've got a lot of admirers around here. I've been giving them a tour of the facilities. Do you, uh, do you have time to show Bob the therapy rooms? Sure. Come on. The doctor. What's her name? Dr. Adair, Bryony Adair. Bryony? That's right. Bryony. Level with me, Doc. I mean, do you really think this is going to work? Well, we've had some success in the past with similar cases, so there's a good chance you'll see some improvement. So what's the best case scenario? Well, the best case scenario is that once we relieve the pressure on the nerves, he'll regain full use of his legs. Well, what's the worst? Hello? Sissy? Daddy? Everything okay? I, uh, yeah. Um, I just got done talking to the doctor. And, uh, things may not be as rosy as we'd hoped for. Um, the doctor says the surgery may not help all that much. As a matter of fact, it could even make things worse. How's Bobber taking it? I haven't told him yet. To be honest, I was kind of wondering whether I should or not. He ought to know. Well, if he knows, then he might not go through with it. Then that's his choice. Yeah, but this might be the only chance he has. And if Bobber gets wind of this, then he loses that chance. And it's likely to be the only one he has left. Oh, here he is now. You want to say hi to Sissy? No. Hey, listen, he says he'll speak at you later. OK. Well, take care. All right. Love you. Just catching him up on the latest. So I heard. Be real nice if you told me, though, first. I don't want the operation. Not if it could make things worse. But, Bob, I also told your father that there's a good chance that we would see improvement. But you don't know for sure? No. No, we don't. Not for sure. Well, I wish you had told me that before everyone got their minds made up. And then I'd have told you I wasn't interested. I'm sorry, son. It's just, I was afraid that... Afraid you couldn't find a way to fix what happened? How many times I gotta tell you? The accident wasn't your fault, so it's not your job to keep on trying to fix it. I have an idea. What if Bob and I were to take a little walk? No point. Not changing my mind. Just think of it as a Sadie Hawkins dance. Lady's choice. Can't say no. Against the rules. <sighs> So, cards on the table. Why the change of heart? Like I said, nobody told me it could make it worse. It's a good reason. No wonder you're upset. Look, I get around good enough. I worked hard to get around this good. Why would I want to risk what I got? I can understand that. No, you can't. No one can. Not you, not my dad, nobody. about your age? 
There was an accident. A fire. Doctors weren't even sure they could save my arm. So many skin grafts and surgeries. Sometimes I wished they'd just stop trying. I about had. But they never doubted they could save my arm. Turns out they were right. So here's the deal. If you decide to have the surgery, I will work with you myself. Just you and me. But there's one thing I won't do. I won't let you quit. Not until we have tried everything we can. Bob, you've been given a gift. Just like I was. If I were you, I'd think real hard before I decided I wasn't interested. How you feeling, bud? A little drowsy? Yeah. Uh? Yeah, bud? If something goes wrong... That's not gonna happen. We've come too far for that. But if something does, I want you to know something. What's that? You're the best dad a fella could ever hope to have. You never gave up on me. On any of us. Especially me. You best get some sleep now, bud. Got a mighty big day tomorrow. Yep. Big day. Mighty big day. I can say is the boy's got more screws in him than a John Deere tractor. Not to mention all these rods and brackets and titanium stuff I never even heard of. He's okay? Oh, he's fine. Came through like a trooper. <laughs> when will we know if it worked? Well, nobody's really saying for sure. Not till he starts rehab anyway. They should have a pretty good idea by then. I had wanted to check on him earlier, but I got behind. How's he doing? He's out there alive. I guess that's good, right? And you? How you holding up? About how you expect. Listen, I haven't eaten all day, and I was going to grab a quick bite. You're welcome to join me. Sure. Fellas got to eat, I reckon. You always been a city girl? What makes you think I'm a city girl? I just figured. You ever heard of Crystal Springs, Mississippi? Population 4,837. Well, at least that's what it was when I left. Well, how in the heck did you end up all the way out here? Let's just say a straight line isn't always the shortest distance between two points. <laughs> There's some truth to that, especially if you see me plow. Oh, There's one. Mind if I ask you a question? Be my guest. How'd you get that nickname? What nickname? Bryony. I mean, I, I know it's got to be short for something, but darn if I can figure out why. The only briny I know has to do with making pickles. And for the life of me, I can't figure out how somebody as pretty as you could get herself nicknamed after something like that. It's Bryony. 
Bryony's a flower that grows in Scotland. It's where my father's from. Hmm. It's nice. I like it. Bryony. I'm sorry. I have to go. I'll take care of that for you. Thank you. Well, it's my pleasure. It's the least I can do. Night. Night. Found it. The new possible science just came in, too. Oh, well, there's still plenty of room in here. Anything else? Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of get well cards on the sideboard. Can you grab those for me? Yeah. Hey, Sissy, where's that hospital address? It's over there on the hutch. Hey, Sissy, what's this? It's nothing. Uh, no, it's an application for the University of Texas. Does Pop know about this? No, just came. Well, when'd you plan on telling him? It's just an application. I'm not sure I'll even send it in. I just want to wait till things settle down a little bit before I mention it. Well, I wouldn't wait too long. Because if you are thinking about leaving, he deserves to know. with a freight train. Probably one of those big Norfolk Southerns used to roll by my house. Engines all painted up with stripes like a big old catfish. OK, I'm going to start you out easy, and you let me know if I'm working you too hard. And then I'll work you harder. You ready? Yep. Let's get cracking. Show them what you're made of, son. Concentrate. Come on, bud. You can do it. One more. Come on. Good. I think that's enough for today. Why don't you go have a long soak in the whirlpool? You deserve it. Ready? Up. Good job, buddy. Proud of you. You know, I can't thank you enough for all you've been doing. It's my pleasure. I've been trying to think of some way to thank you for all your help. No, that's not necessary, really. I was kind of thinking that maybe I could at least just take you out to a nice dinner. There's this little place that the guy at the hotel recommends called the Fire Glow. That is nice. You been there? No. Well, m maybe we could go together. Are you asking me on a date? I, I guess you could call it that. I mean, if it ain't against the rules, I mean, y'all got that doctor-patient privilege rigor Monroe thing going on, so I don't want to get you in no trouble or nothing. I'm sure we could find a way to bend the rules. After all, you are the boy's father. I am his daddy, yeah. Hello. Hey, sissy. DJ there? 
He's right here. DJ, Dad wants to talk to you. No, actually, I need both of you. Both of us. Hey, Daddy, what's up? Well, it seems I got myself a date. Daddy, that's wonderful. <laughs> Who is she? She's Bobber's rehab doctor. See, her and Bobber hit it off so good, I just wanted to show my appreciation. Okay. So where are you taking her? Oh, we're taking her out to dinner. Folks at the hotel recommended this place. Sounds romantic. I see, that's why I need your help. I ain't been out on a date in 25 years, kids. I don't know what to say. What do I do? I, you gotta help me. Well, let's start with conversation. Always talk about her, never yourself. And even when she asks about you, make it seem like you're still talking about her. Got it. Always talk about her. And for heaven's sake, whatever you do, don't use wrecking every other word. Makes you sound like a hick. Well, dang flabbit, son, maybe I am just a hick. Let her catch on to that gradual. You don't have to spring it on the first thing. Anything else? Isn't that enough? Daddy, just relax. Relax and have a good time. You'll do fine. <sighs> okay. Good night. <sighs> relax, have a good time. <laughs> so, you think he's serious? I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing for sure. Give my dad advice about women. Some kind of unsettling about that. Mm. Hey, you want a soda? Oh, sure, if you're buying. Well, why should today be any different? <laughs> Poor Miss Troop. How you doing, DJ? Good. What's with the seed catalog? You ain't thinking about farming, are you? Nope. But I am thinking about farmers. Fact is, it was your dad that got me started on it. I might be carrying a whole new line here. Yeah, that might work. You think so? Well, farmers gotta buy their stuff somewhere. No reason it shouldn't be from you. I like the way you think, son. Welcome to the fire glow. May I help you? Yes, sir. Uh, Burton, party of two. I called in earlier. Excuse me, sir, but uh, may I have a word with you? Sure. I'm sorry, sir, but we require our patrons to wear a tie. Oh, I got on a tie. I mean a tie tie, the normal kind. I'm afraid I don't own the normal kind. I see. Well, I'm sure we can find something that will work. That should suffice. You think it's bright enough? Well, let's just call it. That should suffice. You think it's bright enough? Well, let's just call it colorful. That'll be five dollars, please. Five bucks, you're gonna need to tie it for me. Let's see. There. Voila. Oh, wow. What's that for? Well, I guess I needed a tie. You had a tie. Ah. Finally dressed for dinner. I thought I was dressed when I got here, but... Uh... Are we coming? No, we're not coming. We're going. I know a place where people still have manners. It's a great little restaurant on the wharf. Uh, it's excuse me. Fancy, but it's not... I'll need the tie. Sure. <gasps> that should get your fire glowing. Wow. Now that is what I call service. I waited my share tables back home. Mm. Cheers. Oh, cheers. So when did you decide to become a doctor? It's what I've always wanted to be, for as far back as I can remember. But even knowing early on, I mean, it still must have been long. You have to make a lot of sacrifices, but 
I'm sure you know all about that, considering you raised a family all by yourself. Not fair. You know way more about me than I know about you. What do you want to know? You're a single lady? Now. Oh, I seeing anyone? My job keeps me pretty busy. That would be a no? That would be a no. Oh. Huh. Ever married? Mm-hmm. Children? My folks sure enough thought we were. You know that's not what I'm talking about. You got kids? No. Did you want some malt vinegar with that? I don't know. You tell me. I'm pretty sure that you do. It's not my prettiest feature. It doesn't matter. You're still beautiful. Want to tell me about it? You mind me asking? My mama and I were canning preserves. The boiler that she used to sterilize the jars exploded. It knocked a whole box of paraffin into the fire and all over me. By the time we put it out, I had third-degree burns, all the way up to my shoulder. Eight surgeries later, half a dozen skin grafts, a lot of tears and hard work, and here I am. So that's what did it. Did what? Changed Barbara's mind. You told him about you, didn't you? I may have mentioned it. I want people to know that it's okay to be afraid. Everybody's afraid of something. Probably even you. I'm not going to be able to thank you enough for all that you've done. You'll never know how grateful I am. I just remember reading your story and thinking, who is this guy? This Daniel Burton? So strong. Never backs down from what he thinks is right, yet so kind. Now you're embarrassing me. I thought this guy can't be real. I thought we just didn't care for the book. But here you are. I hope I'm not a disappointment. No, you're not a disappointment. Would it be all right if I kissed you? I'd never forgive you if you didn't. Hope it won against the rules. Was it? I wouldn't much care if it was. We've stabilized the injury. That's that's the important part. And uh, judging from the test results, there seems to be some modest improvement in motor function. So what you're saying is it didn't work? I'm saying there's improvement, and that's what we want. But the boy still can't walk. Pa, it's OK. It is some better. It really is. It just seems to me like he's been through an awful lot for only some better. That's all I'm saying. You can't let yourself get discouraged. With ongoing physical therapy, there's a chance we could still see continued improvement. Hey, just how am I supposed to manage that? Eh? We'll find someone near Canaan. I could even work with them to set up a program specifically for Bob. I'm happy to make some phone calls. Or you could just follow us back and find someone in person. Oh, now hold up here, son. We can't just ask Dr. Adair to drop everything she's got going on here and fly off to Canaan. I mean, especially with the holidays just around the corner. Maybe she ought to spend Christmas with us. I'm sure she's got plans. Do you? Bob. Actually, I don't. Well, then it's settled. She's spending Christmas with us, and she can meet Sarah and DJ. Oh, and Ronnie will be there, too. I don't want to impose. Impose? My dad doesn't even know the meaning of the word impose. Do you, Pop? Of course, we'd love for you to come join us, but you just need to know what you're getting yourself into. It ain't nothing ritzy. It's just a good old family Christmas. That sounds wonderful. Okay, well, come on, Pop. We gotta get to a phone and tell the others. You go ahead, son. I'll catch up with you. Looks to me like you just got railroaded. Are you sure about this? Are you kidding me? I've been wondering how on earth I was ever gonna manage saying goodbye to you. It's gonna be a whole lot easier now knowing there's a hello just a few weeks away. I can't imagine anything better than spending Christmas in Canaan with you. Oh, <laughs> 
Bandit, either push, pull, or get out the way. Preferably the ladder. Here, I'll put him out. Come on, Bandit. Come on, Bandit. That the nicest tree you could find? What's wrong with it? It's green, we've got branches in all directions, and there ain't no squirrel nests. Seems a little thin on that side. Rodney, what if we turn it the other way? Maybe it's got a better side. Did you clean all the junk out of the guest room? What are all those sea catalogs? I thought she was a country girl. Make her feel right at home. This country girl might just be your father's new beau, and I'll be switched if I'm gonna let her think a bunch of hayseeds live here. Now go on. I say, this looks pretty good. Looks really good. Good enough for country folk. Now we just need the angel. I'll get it. she'd mind me inviting a friend here for Christmas? I imagine she'd be happy. She'd never have wanted you to stay alone forever. What better time than Christmas? She always did love Christmas. She always loved this angel. Then let's put her up on her angel's perch so she can watch over us, just like always. Come on, the boys are waiting. Okay, who wants the honors? DJ? No, my hand's got pitch on. You'll have to. Bar? Can't reach that far. Why don't you do it this year? I suppose I could, I guess. All righty. Plane lands in a couple hours. Best get moving. Hey, you sure you don't want to borrow some of my cologne? It's musk. I'll do just fine without it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Somebody's a little prickly. Wonder what that's about. I wouldn't have the faintest idea. You kids are gonna end up embarrassing me yet. <laughs> well, we'll certainly give it our best shot. Drive safe. Will do. She knows what she's in for. <laughs> Quit fussing. You look sufficiently glamorous. Why is it that I feel like a mother meeting my son's prom date for the first time? Well, I'm not quite sure, but if you're thinking about having the birds and the bees talk with them, I think that duck's pretty well flown. <laughs> What's taking him so long? Well, he's getting her things. Women come with a lot of accessories. They do. Would you look at the three of uh... You're all lined up like it's a firing squad. Here we are, guys and gal. Please welcome Dr. Adair. Hello. Glad you made it. Me too. Mrs. Mulder's son, DJ. Ma'am, uh, doctor? It's Bryony. Bryony, ma'am. And this is Rodney Freeman, Canaan's most famous author. Well, Canaan's only author, best I can tell. <laughs> I loved your book. It makes coming here almost like coming home. Oh, thank you. And this is Sarah. Sissy, I call her, which I'm sure she hates. Sarah, I'm so glad to finally meet you. 
I hope you brought an appetite. Dinner's about ready. I bet you'd love some help. Just point me towards the kitchen and turn me loose. No. I mean, you're a guest. I can manage. Well, let me help you get settled in. Well, come on, I'll grab your things here. Just follow me through here. What a lovely home. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> no, ma'am. And what's your new book about? Uh, short stories mostly about growing up. Things my grandmother taught me. Oh, you would have loved her? That woman was fearless. Oh, she had to be. You know, it wasn't easy back then. Back then? When did it get so easy all of a sudden? I must have missed that part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now it's Sarah's turn. I want to hear all about you. What about me? Anything. Hopes, dreams, any special fellows lurking out there that we should know about? Not much time for that when you're busy riding herd on this bunch. Then how about your plans? Not much to tell. Ever thought about college? As bright as your dad says you are. <clears throat> yes, Susie. What about college? Sarah, go to college. What for? For your information, I recently applied at the University of Texas at Austin. Daniel, why didn't you tell me? That's wonderful. That's the first I've heard of it myself. I was wondering when one of us was finally going to make a run for it, especially now that there's somebody here to keep track of you. Hey, you got them all tucked in? Mm-hmm. Three in beds and Rodney on the couch. Listen, Daddy, what I said, about going to college. I just filled out the application, that's all. I probably won't even get accepted. And even if I do, I don't have to go. I've been meaning to tell you, it's just when she asked, I blurted it out. Well, she has a gift for that, making folks say what they're feeling. It's obvious the boys like her. Yeah. And you? I just met her. I don't know her hardly at all. She certainly feels at home. But you like her, right? I like that you like her. Block identity. Oh, I haven't had one of these since last year. Hey, look, I got one too. It's just the color I wanted. <laughs> DJ, hand me that package. Only one left under the tree. Thank you. I see we got a little family tradition around here. Kids know all about this. It started one particular Christmas. My daddy started it. Uh, been a pretty rough year. We weren't expecting much. But come Christmas morning, here were all these gifts wrapped and under the tree, just like always. Well, my mama, when she seen it, boy, she lit in my dad and said, where'd you get the money for all that? Daddy just smiled and looked at her. I said, don't you know another woman? Even if you're flat broke, you can still have some Christmas. See, to him, some Christmas meant giving all the gifts you really wanted to give when only your heart could afford it. We did it that first year Rodney came to live with us. You remember that? Well, I sure do. You gave him my first typewriter. That's right. So this year, with you being practically family and all, I thought you deserved some Christmas, too. It's a little house. It's a country house. You're always talking about how you're a country girl, so... just thought maybe someday you might like a little country place of your own. Thank you. I love it. I really do. It's so sweet. Of course, until then, you're plenty welcome to stay right here with us. I brought along a little Christmas of my own. First, the guy. A sweater. Uh, just any sweater. 
It's cashmere. <laughs> Nothing wrong with sheep's wool. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Thanks. And Sarah, this is for you. They're Laurel Birch. I think she makes the most beautiful things, don't you? Well, go ahead, sissy. Put them on. I'll do it later. No, I'll do it now. I want to see what you look like in them. Look how pretty you look. You could be on the runway. Yeah, along with all the other crop dusters. Now, come on, be nice, DJ. Sorry. Thank you, Dr. Adair. You shouldn't have. All us girls need some pretty things. Now, Daniel, your turn. Oh, Brian, you, you didn't need to do all this. You better see if you like it before you start thanking me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real tie. <laughs> Ooh. Italian silk, no less. But you didn't think I'd notice. I love it. Thank you. I guess no more getting thrown out of ritzy places. Oh, come in handy around here, that's for sure. And? I brought something for the house. A kind of a thank you to all of you for inviting me to Christmas. Here. Oh, you didn't have to do that. When you guys want to open it? Go on. Mm -hmm. What is it? A friend brought it back from Italy. I wanted you all to have it. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, ma'am. Sure is. I thought it would look so pretty on your tree. We already have an angel. Oh, but not like this. This is a Botticelli. Well, a copy, anyway. All the way from Florence. You know, it would look real nice on the mantle. I, I vote we put it there. Mm -hmm. It's a tree topper. You can't put a tree topper on the mantle. Here, let me do it. little touch of renaissance. Didn't you hear him? He said we already have an angel. And where do you get the nerve to just waltz in here and move things around without asking? You had no right. <sighs> Sarah, I'm so sorry. Why don't you just leave? been hard on all of them. I'm not blind to that, but I think it's been toughest on her. I never meant to do anything that would upset her. I know. It's just all happened pretty quick, you know. Was Christmas was when we lost her mama. I think it's just brought it all back. For you, too? Thing is, Maybe she knows you're just not ready. It's just her way of showing it, of getting your attention. It's odd. 14 years I've lived with this. Sorrow, losing Betsy. And I thought that. I know what you thought. Sometimes we think we've worked through a thing just by having lived with it so long. But oftentimes it's something we set aside and never really faced at all. Just gone on with life. Daniel, you 
you've done a remarkable thing for your kids. You've given them a stable home. And I know that wasn't easy. You took on Rodney when he needed a family. And maybe you let that focus distract you from your own grief. I don't know. Maybe. And now they're grown. I think it's your turn. Your turn to face that grief. To work on you. In your own time. In your own way. Just you. I'm sorry. Only on Hallmark Drama. You sure you don't want me to drive you? My daddy always taught me a fella should leave the dance with the same girl he brought. DJ Alfred, it's fine. You know, all I'm asking for is just a little more time. We all have things we can't change. I only wish you could have looked a little deeper into your heart before you thought to invite me in. Goodbye, Daniel. Man, you up to now. Come on, let's go find out. It's too much trouble. You go. Okay, now. Sure. No, no, no. Yeah. Fertilizer have back and pesticides around the corner. Right next to the ones against the Hey, Mr. Shoe. Rodney. <laughs> Rodney Freeman. When you, when you sit here, put your foot in the straps. Sit there. And when you push down, raise the sandbag. <laughs> and you want more weight, you can just put some sand in. Well, you want to try it out? Those doctors already tried everything in the book. I don't know if a bunch of pulleys and a bag of sand is going to make a difference. Last year, this was all alfalfa. But I've been speaking to Ralph Clark down at the co-op, and he says we might ought to consider putting in soybeans, maybe up to half. Now, I told him I'd ask him. We could do that. Well, mind you, down at Davison Dunn, putting in 100 acres or more sorting. Davison Dunn? You know that new company farm south of town? Maybe they know something we don't. Well, we ain't never planned no sorghum before. Just because we haven't doesn't mean we shouldn't. Whatever you think. Oh, no, 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 Daddy. I ain't put my head in that news without some company. And whatever we plant, it's either gonna freeze, bake, get eaten by bugs, or be worth nothing by the time we bring it in. So I say plant whatever you want to plant. It ain't gonna matter much anyway. No, you just Mr. Sunshine these days. Hey, 
Where are you going? Town's out of way. Well, why drive all the way to Clarksboro where we can order from Old Man Shoot? Well, Rodney was right. It's like opening day at the county fair. All he's missing is the cotton candy. <laughs> and the people. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. What? Well, farmers not buying their stuff here. We may have come a ways in this town, but we ain't come that far. Wait here. I'm not useless, you know. Whatever you say, Bobbles. Here, Bandit, come on, boy. There you go. Hallmark Drama. How long has he been out there? Almost an hour. I think it's about time we all had a little talk. I've never seen him like this before. Ever since Christmas, when Brian had left, it's like the joy just flew right out of his life. Why didn't he just call her and tell her he's sorry? He's too proud to let her see him like this. So why'd he let her leave if he loved her so much? Maybe he decided he just wasn't ready for someone else in his life. It's been 14 years. How ready does it got to be? Phone she hadn't busted that angel. It wasn't the angel. It wasn't? It wasn't the angel or mama or any of that other stuff. He did it because of me. Hey, Bobber, change your channel to Happy Days, will you? You know that's only for emergencies, right? What do you think this is? You need to go where? California, to talk to Dr. Adair. She's the only one who can help. Does Mr. Burton know about this? He'd never let me. Then how can you just up and disappear? I'll tell him I'm staying over at a girlfriend's. Jerry Lynn Drake's baby's sick, and I'm helping out. I got enough for my ticket. I just never flown anywhere before. Don't even know where to start. Can you help me? Are you sure about this? Well, I guess I do know a little something about getting out of Dodge. Or whatever this place is. I'd 
to see another 20 degrees of rotation. I think that's enough for today. You worked really hard. I'm really proud of you. Sarah, this is a surprise. Sorry to barge in on you like this, but I need to ask you a favor. You want me to do what? We want you to come back to Canaan. He only let you go because he thought having you in his life would hurt me. He didn't know what else to do. Does he know you're here? And this was your idea, not his. The family's worried about him. It's like all the joy's just gone out of him. He never smiles, never laughs. If anyone can help him, it's you. He still cares about you. I know he does. That doesn't give me the right to show up at his door uninvited. I'm inviting you. We all are. But Daniel isn't. And he's the only one who can. He's the only one who can open his heart the way he wants to, the way he needs to. If I show up in Canaan before he's ready, it won't solve anything. Chances are it'll likely make things worse. I'm sorry. So you'll let me know how he's doing? I will. Sarah, I know this hasn't been easy, especially for you. We've held this family together so long, and then suddenly your dad shows up with another woman in his life. But I want you to know one thing. I know how much you mean to this family. And no matter what happened, I would never have done anything to change that. Thank you, Dr. Adair. Bryony. Bryony. <laughs> Thanks, Rodney. All right, take care. Where the heck you been, Sissy? You know where. I talked to you. I talked to Jerry Lynn. I went to California to talk to Bryony. And what exactly did you expect to get out of doing that? Give you two a second chance. It was the happiest you've been since Mama died. I've never seen you like that. And then it was like this cloud came over all of us. I know why you did it. You did it to protect me. We'll get by somehow. We always do. Sometimes we get by because we have to. But sometimes getting by is just settling. For once in your life, you deserve more than just settling. She probably don't even care anymore. She probably moved on. You don't know that. Did she say anything about seeing anybody? Didn't say, didn't ask. Figured it was best to leave that up to you. Good night. Dr. Adair? Hey, Brian. It's Daniel. Hi. I've been thinking about you. I understand you had a visitor. I did. It was quite a surprise. She's worried about you. Says you've been a little down. That doesn't sound like you. Ah, it's just a rough patch I'm going through. I'll be fine. Daniel, there's one thing I learned early on. Sometimes the best way to lighten your own burden is to take on someone else's. Find someone who's worse off than you. Someone who needs you. Plant some other fields. Water someone else's crops for a while. Sounds like good advice. I'm going to keep that in mind. You're a good man, Daniel. A lot of people care about you. 
Probably more than you realize. Thank you. That means a lot coming from you. It's true. I know it firsthand. Well, uh, I just wanted to check in on you. I'm glad you did. It's nice to hear your voice. Hey, if you're ever in the neighborhood, you be sure and stop in and say hello, all right? You too. Okay. Well, good night. Night. Only on Hallmark Drama. You boys had yourself quite a year. Hey, thank DJ for that. He's the one who wanted to plant the sorghum. <laughs> well, then you're lucky someone at your place knows something about farming. <laughs> oh! Woo -hoo. Okay. Come on, Pop. Let's celebrate. Chili cheese fries, and I'm buying. <laughs> Who's that? That's Delmer P. Davis, owner of Davis and Dunn Farms. Where he's going? For long? He loaned half the county. Hey, Dad, you coming? I don't know how much longer the shoe can hold on. <laughs> Agro Harvest wants the money. He told me they can barely afford to keep his lights on. And if he does start selling, his markup is next to nothing. I can't believe people would rather drive a half hour away and pay a third again more. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to. It's the economics of prejudice. You tell me after all this town's been through, there's still folks here that'd rather see a hardworking fellow like shoot, fail, and fall flat than see him succeed? What rock you been hiding under, Paul? You think just because it don't matter to us, it should matter to them? I got news for you. Not everyone's like you. It'd be nice if they were. But the simple fact is that they're not. Not by a long shot. See a man fail just because he's black? It's just not right. Help you, Mr. Burke. Yes, sir. I was wondering if you was hiring. Hiring for what? Store clerk. <laughs> What's so funny? Tell me, you see anyone here needing a clerk? Well, you will. Sometimes all you need to do to bring folks in is just show them a familiar face. You mean a familiar white face? I just mean a familiar farmer's face. Christmas time coming up real soon. You bound to be needing some more help. Well, I can't pay you nothing. Not at first. That's OK. I'll just take it out and trade. But why? Why do you want to work here? I got my reasons. Let's just leave it at that. OK, you can start tomorrow. I could start tomorrow, but I'm ready to start today. Today? Yeah, today. All right. What do we do first? What we do first is we sweep the porch. Yes, sir, boss. Lord have mercy. I 
recount every footstep and how time was spent. As I sit here lost and all along, I realize that all roads lead you home. inside you never really leave Oh, you keep on searching the hopes of what you find Every road that you live wrong leads you home Can I help you, son? One customer all day, and that was the Ding Dong. Can't make a living just selling Ding Dong. Well, you just got to be patient. You know, I saw that fella from Davis and Dunn drop by yesterday. Yeah, just got to give him time, that's all. Time's the one thing in short supply. Everything else I got. Tomorrow will be a better day. Listen, Daniel, you've wasted enough of your time here already. Let's quit fooling ourselves. Just take our losses and move on. Whatever I owe you, I'll find a way to pay it. It might take me a while, but I'm good for it. I'm not worried about it. You know something? It just feels good to do something for somebody else. Tomorrow's gonna be a better day. Daniel Burton. I reckon we need to talk about our town. Now, don't get me wrong. I've got nothing against buying from this particular gentleman. Just that we require a certain quality in what we buy. Well, you consider agro harvest product good quality, don't you? I suppose. It's as good as any. Well, then you'd be getting what you're used to. But you see, we buy in bulk. <laughs> That's good. Because we sell in bulk. As a matter of fact, any price you can get, we can match. Probably beat. And by the time you figure in the cost of hauling it all the way out to here, it's bound to be cheaper for you. Well, that's another thing. You see, the fellow we buy from down in Clarksboro has been at it 20 years or more. He's got a track record. This Shoop fella? Well, Shoop's family's owned the store since the early 30s. He's second generation. All right. I'll level with you. It just doesn't seem right buying from him. It's nothing personal. It's just not my kind of place. Well, I guess I misjudged you. Sorry for wasting your time. Now, now, hold on a second here. I got a right to buy where I feel comfortable. That's my choice. There's no law against that, is there? There's no law against it. Not an official one, anyway. I'm going to level with you, Mr. Davis. I'm just a struggling farmer. I got an old truck, an old tractor. Some years we do OK, others not so good. But I can tell you one thing. I'd be a whole lot worse off if it wasn't for my neighbors, if it wasn't for this town. You see? 
we get a chance to help a neighbor, but we just choose to stand by and watch them fail when we could have done something about it, then this town dies a little. I'm just asking you to help a neighbor. That's all. Just one neighbor. At 8, a holiday event you won't find anywhere else. Countdown to Christmas 10th anniversary, all season long. Only on Hallmark Channel. Download the free Hallmark Movie Checklist app and set premiere reminders so you don't miss a minute. I need to talk to about placing a seed order. I can help you with that. Right on over here. I'll get you all fixed up. Emmanuel Shoot. Delmer Davis. So there you are. What you doing? Is that her thinking? About? Shoot. He asked me if I wanted to go in with him. To be his partner. Do you want to? I might. Let DJ run things around here. He's been doing it mostly by himself anyway. I think that's a fine idea. For you and for DJ. I've been thinking too. About? I've been accepted by UT starting next year. Even offered me a scholarship. What with working and Rodney's offer to loan me a little money for tuition, I think I can pay my way. If it's okay with you. That's great. I think you should go. You know, your mama always said you were going to go to college. She'd be so happy. Though it's going to be a little different around here without you. Maybe you couldn't invite Bryony out for a visit. Nah. I'm sure she's gotten on with her life by now. I'd expect that. You don't know that? Not for sure? Hey, Bryony, it's... I'm sorry. I can't come to the phone right now, but if you leave me a message, I'll be happy to return your call. Bryony, hi. It's just... Hey, Bryony. It's Daniel. Daniel Burton. I just want to give you a call and let you know that you were right about what you told me. The sooner you start trying to help somebody else, the more you realize that your own problems don't really add up to all that much. I don't know how I ever lost sight of that. Anyway, I also want to say, if you're ever anywhere around Canaan, I'd love it if you'd stop by. Or if you just want to call sometime, say hello. I'd like that too. I think about you. I think about you a lot lately. I hope you're doing good. Well, anyhow, hope to hear from you. And by the way, Merry Christmas. <sighs> you know, whoever invented them daggum answering machines ought to be shot. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, son. Thank you, folks. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas now. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. Hurry up and lock the door before somebody else comes in and buys something. <laughs>
Listen, Daniel. I owe you a lot. No more than I owe you. Well, whoever deserved it more. Thank you. You headed home? Yeah, got a whole house full of in-laws, you. I'm headed out to the Freeman place. Rodney says it's his turn to have Christmas out there this year, and I got a feeling him and Sarah's probably got something special cooking. Sounds real nice. Yeah, I gotta enjoy having everybody together, you know, with Sarah leaving for college next year. Once they leave the roost, it's hard to get them back. Then you best make the most of it. You got that right. Merry Christmas, partner. Merry Christmas, my friend. Merry Christmas. He's here. Hey, everybody. Sorry I'm late. Hey. Hey, evening. Hi. I thought you'd never get here. Me too. Old Shoop was so full of good tidings. I didn't think he's gonna lock up and let me come home. How can I help you? How about you finish setting the table? I'm on it. Sissy, I think you miscounted. There's an extra plate here. No, it's right. There's someone else joining us. Oh, really? Somebody I know? I'd say there's a good chance. Bryony? What are you doing here? You invited me. Don't you remember? You said if I was ever in the neighborhood, I should stop and say hello. So here I am. Hello. So how long you plan on staying? I'm not sure. There's a job opening in Clarksboro. They're looking for a good orthopedist. I've been thinking I might apply for it. Are you sure about this? About what? Moving to Canaan. It's a long way from the big city. I've always been a country girl. You know that. Besides, it'll give me a chance to work a little bit more with Bobber. Well, he'll sure appreciate that. It's not a permanent position. Only a year. Then what? I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see. I reckon a person can learn a lot in a year. Daniel Burton, don't you? Yeah, I reckon he can. Hey, you two, dinner's ready. Well, let's go. Oh my, it's lovely. DJ Bobber, we're ready. Here, buddy, let me get this for you. No, it's okay, I'm fine. You sure? What's the matter? You never seen anyone walk before? Oh <laughs> boy, Bobber. Proud of you, Daddy. Let us bow our heads and thank the Lord. I oh boy, Bobber. Proud of you, Daddy. Let us bow our heads and thank the Lord. Like my grandmother, Miss Eunice, would have. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for us to share this meal one to another. We ask you to bless those folk who struggle, even now, as we enjoy this plenty. And as we partake of this food, help us grow, not only in strength, but in love, one to the other, in a desire to be more like thee. Amen. 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 Amen.
Well said, Rodney. Your grandma will be awful proud. Hey, who wants cornbread? Hey, uh, you want some of these taters? Sure. As we gathered around the table, who could have imagined how a gift for Baba would become for Danny another gift entirely? But then in the words of Briny, what could be better than spending a Christmas, any Christmas, in a place called Cain?